Hello everyone, this is Colin once again. This video is going to be another video about psychology. Uh, it will be included in the ongoing uh, video series that I'm doing on the subject of psychology and of course uh, this humongous theme of psychology uh, that I'll be doing uh, be right next to my comparative religion and um, videos on Islam uh, it will encompass many subtopics. And so, for example, for those of you who did not see the first video that I made on the subject of psychology, please view the link uh, just below the uh, in the more info section. You'll see uh, a link to my video, uh, which was an introduction to Sigmund Freud. And so, essentially, what I'm going to be doing is making videos of, uh, of a couple different natures. One, I'll be making videos uh, specifically on major psychologists uh, in the history of psychology and their key works and elements of their life and uh, lives and things like this. So for example, I plan on in the immediate future doing more videos on Sigmund Freud and his major works and also on Carl Jung. And, uh, and then there's a video like this, which is essentially someone asking me a basic question uh, with regards to psychology and my views or my opinions on a given subject. And I encourage any of you who have questions uh, for my views on certain subjects in psychology uh, to of course uh, send me a message uh, let me know uh, your question I'll do the best I can to answer if I don't know the answer to the question um, then of course I will just tell you outright I have no idea now keep in mind I I'm not suggesting that I'm an expert I am majoring in psychology and in the future I hope to myself be a practicing uh, therapist and so I by no means uh, have I do not let me just make this clear I do not have a license to practice psychotherapy so if you have any serious mental health issues uh, or questions about mental health uh, I would be better uh, serve to better serve you to uh, refer your questions to your actual uh, general practitioner but uh, questions about like the nature of this video I have no problem talking about because this is just my opinion on something that anybody can study and it's in the realm of psychology so yes, the uh, the subject of today's video or this video in particular is on memory, with a emphasis on the repression of memories. This was prompted to me from a uh, a friend of mine and a, and a subscriber of my videos. I won't mention uh, her by name because, as we all, as you all know, uh, I don't. That's not my style of doing things. When someone asks me a personal question, unless they actually tell me it's okay, if she decides to make herself known in the comment section, uh, that'd be great. Uh, if not, then I, of course, that's her choice. Uh, so I'm going to read her the message that she sent me just so we can use it as a basis for the rest of the video um, because nothing, you know, you know nothing you know, personal is mentioned and if there is, I'm just going to skip over it. So uh, for an example, uh, let's see here. Uh, the first po part, excuse me, uh, it starts off by saying, um, talking about this video, uh, and then it says that, that she's heard conflicting theories on about repressed memories, and some people have said that they are a rare occurrence and it's dangerous to trust them, others say that they are common. Uh, she says that uh, she knows people who have studied psychology in college and tends to think that repressed memories are more common, uh, but that she's heard that other opinions uh, say that, you know, that they're just not, they're not very common at all. And so what, what are my thoughts on this? Well, my personal opinion on the subject of repressed memories is that I do believe that they are actually a common occurrence. Um, with regards to what repressed memories are, um, I, 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 I do believe that, that on a basic level that repressed memories are actually a common occurrence, whether it's uh, what Freud talked about as infantile amnesia or the fact that when we're very young of course we have these memories but then as we get older we have a hard time remembering uh, certain uh, events uh, before a certain age or uh, we recall a certain age um, maybe when we were like three or four but everything before that is fuzzy maybe we only recall one memory um, you know, when, at, at a certain age, and that's it. Everything prior to that, or maybe we have a very acute memory of of, of a traumatic event or uh, some sort of major event that just is in, ingrained in our mind, and we just we, we just don't forget it. But we know we were like five or four when the event occurred, or when the memory of the event occurred. Um, and so, to to go on with like, what's let's start with the definition of of repression for an example uh, i'm reading from my textbook this is one of the textbooks i used uh in one of my psychology beginning psychology classes in college um 
uh, Introduction to Psychology by Dennis uh, Kuhn and John O. Mitter. Uh, and they, I pulled up here, Repression and Suppression of Memories. I'll just read to you what they say in the textbook. Textbook says, uh, take a moment and scan over the events of the last few years of your life. What kinds of things most easily come to mind? Many people remember happy, positive events better than disappointment and, and irritations. A clinical psychologist would call this tendency repression or motivated forgetting. Through repression, painful, threatening, or embarrassing memories are held out of, uh, out of consciousness. An example is provided by soldiers who have repressed some of the horrors they saw during combat. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about uh, saying that people are prone to repression, tend to be extremely sensitive to emotional events. It also is talking about, you know, it, sexual abuse can also lead to repressed memories um, and, and things like this. And then it goes on to say it's also possible that such memories may surface during psychotherapy, other circumstances. However, caution is required any time accusations are made on the basis of seemingly recovered memories. In what appeared to be an extreme case of, of repression, Eileen Franklin testified in court in 1990 that her father, George Franklin, abducted, raped, and killed the eight-year-old uh, eight Susan Nason in 1969. Eileen testified that the memory surfaced one day as she looked into the eye of her own young daughter. Her father was convicted solely on the basis of her repressed memory. However, the conviction was overturned when DNA tests cleared her father of a second murder she also accused him of committing. As the Franklin case illustrates, trying to separate, separate true memories from fantasies is a major headache for psychologists in the courts. Um, and then, and then another point, uh, and then it goes on to talk about suppression. It starts off with a question, uh, it says here, If I try to forget a test I failed, am I suppre repressing it? No, repression can be distinguished from suppression, an act of conscious attempt to put something out of the mind. And then it, it mentions that, you know, uh, in, 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 sm in a small paragraph. So, it's important, and that's really the only thing this textbook actually says regarding the topic. And so, it, it really is up to individual psychologists and, L and, and theories to determine what is the deal with repression. Again, the mind is still something that's unknown territory. I mean, uh, do, you know, um, leaps in the 20th century have been made, uh, leaps and bounds, to uh, to figure out exactly what the, the psyche and and the mind, the consciousness, the unconsciousness. Uh, with the works of Sigmund Freud, as I said, he mentions infantile uh, amnesia, the idea that when you are uh, younger. Uh, these memories become very foggy at a past a certain age. There are people out there, of course, that can remember acutely certain events, and maybe more than the next person. So everybody is really different as far as what has exactly been repressed. So repression isn't always necessarily a negative thing in the example uh, given by Freud. Uh, Jung was also the opinion that there are memories that are repressed. Um, Freud tend to view repression as, uh, of course, with the majority of his theory was based on sexuality, and so uh, most of the things that are repressed memories, this is again outside of the infantile amnesia, um, things that are purposely repressed are things uh, that are too heinous for our superego. In other words, uh, our psyche in a nutshell is divided into three spheres, uh, basic spheres. You have the superego, the ego, and the id. The id is the uh, is wholly unconscious, and it represents our drives, our basic needs like hunger, warmth, sex, and sex, of course, being a huge part of uh, Freud's theory. And the ego it represents our consciousness. The superego is the element of consciousness that has been forced onto us due to either our culture, our religion, our upbringing, our parents, etc. So basically, the superego represents our moral parameters. So essentially, when a memory is repressed, it's because it is something that is, as the textbook mentions, so heinous to our consciousness that we do repress it, or in the case of Freud's specific theory, the superego represses something that is just a shock to our consciousness, uh, because it is something that uh, is driven by sexuality, but it is something that our superego wants to reject consciously, and so therefore pushes it into the unconscious, hence repression. And so many of his theories uh, have to deal with the uh, therapeutic idea of bub of letting these concepts come up, bubble forth, and uh, figure out exactly what the repressed memories are and how they relate to us as our personality. Uh, Carl Jung was also uh, similar to this opinion. Um, to, he did not, I don't think, fully rejected the concept that uh, memories are repressed and for reasons such as defense mechanisms. Um, 
He, of course, got into more of the archetype of the Shadow, which I will be elaborating on in future videos when I get to Jung's theories. Um, but essentially, uh, with psychoanalysis, we have this idea that we do actively repress memories for reasons because they are just so much of an assault on our consciousness, it's better to just do away with them into the unconscious. So then, the, my friend's message continues, uh, also on the same note, how does memory repression usually manifest itself? Do the memories of a certain traumatic event get repressed or an entire period of your life? Also, under what circumstances do these repressed memories resurface, and can they be trusted if one seems to, to resurface with little or no pro provocation? Uh, and so, uh, some of these things I I've already dealt with, with a textbook example, for example, you, to answer the question, are they trustworthy? Well, in the case of that, in the extreme case of that court case mentioned in my textbook, some people conjure up what it is, is just memories. They're not actually uh, repressed memories. They are fantasies, if you will, uh, fantasies of the mind. Um, can they be trusted? Well, it, it, re it really depends on, on, on you, personally, and the therapist. Uh, some, sometimes, if you want to know if, if an event has happened, if, for example, you know an event has happened that uh, involves another person, like, let's say maybe you, you saw a really, really uh, scary movie when you were a child. It just utterly scared you. Well, you could, of course, ask, and let's say your family members are with you, you could ask them, hey, did we ever watch this horror movie? I just had this flash, this memory, I recall this. Um, and if you have witnesses that can help you out with that, then, then that could verify the repressed memory. Um, how do they usually manifest themselves? Well, Freud and Jung were of the opinion that a lot of the time, repressed memories usually are conjured up due to, through dreams. And I will be talking about this in more detail in my next video when I talk about Freud's book, The Interpretation of Dreams. Uh, it was mainly through dreams because since we are, our consciousness is uh, sort of on pause, if you will, in layman's terms, for the moment, our unconscious is free to exert itself in its fullness as much as possible. Of course, Jung and Freud had, diff had different opinions on dreams in general, but this would be one major way how rep repressed memories are bubble up. Sometimes if you are, something just triggers it, like let's say you return to a park that you um, used to frequent as a child, but you moved away, and you come to that park, and suddenly you see the park, and you just have a flash. It just you just remember a memory that you had long forgotten. Can, of course, uh, do memory uh, are the memories of certain traumatic events? Uh, yes, traumatic events are, of course are repressed. Uh, many of them are repressed. Some are not, however, but that is a defense mechanism of the mind. Um, so entire period of your life? I mean, yeah, this is where we get into the idea of amnesia, and of course there are people that the amnesia is seen as a defense mechanism and can therefore uh, be viewed as something where you just cut off a whole section of someone's life because of the traumatic event. Um, let's see here. Uh, in other words, I'm reading her message. Uh, in other words, how, if at all, can you tell if a memory is actual memory and not your mind trying to make a sense of a part of your life which you do not remember? Well, again, that's up, again, that's up to... Uh, interpretation of, for yourself. Uh, again, it, this can be very difficult to ascertain, actually. Another thing, with memory, what does it mean if, you, if your memories, at least some of most of them, are as if you are detached? I'm not sure if this is related to disassociation, but I think it's it is intriguing. For example, most of my childhood memories are as if I'm observing the situation or event from the outside. If it is a memory of me doing something, it is a memory of me watching myself do it. If it is a memory of someone else, it may or me may not be a memory from the physical vantage point that I was in at, in at the time. And so, yeah, I mean, and you ask, does it make sense? It, it does make sense. Um, I personally have never experienced this for myself, and so... Really, I, I'm not entirely sure what this is, to be completely honest. Um, you, you have a memory. You remember yourself doing something, but your memory is relating it to you consciously f as if you're watching yourself. It's like watching yourself in, in a movie or something. Um, I would say my educated guess, I have no basis for this whatsoever, but my educated guess is that perhaps the memory that you are experiencing is a true one. Like, if you remember getting ice cream, you know, and the ice cream man rolls it down your childhood, you know, road or something, your, the house where you grew up in, and he comes down the road, you have this memory of going to get ice cream, but perhaps it's a generic memory of something you did many times before. So you're not really recollecting a specific of uh, specific time, but you remember yourself as a child doing that, and so your mind is conjuring up a generic image of something that you would have done. It would be like if you were remembering um, playing Little League as a kid. Uh, and you may not recall an exact moment, but you can picture yourself 
you know, hitting the ball or something to that effect. Um, that may be the, the case in which you are remembering. But that's my educated guess. Uh, I honestly have not heard of this uh, before, it, except for when you like when you are recalling yourself doing something. Like you know, someone says, "Have you ever driven a car before?" And you go, "Yeah, yeah, sure." And you may have a flash that you you yourself are driving. Um, it's more of a conjured fantasy with elements of real real memory. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. Uh, this was a pretty long video, so I apologize for that. But uh, please feel free to uh, comment in the comment section. Uh, get a discussion going if you'd like. Uh, if anybody has any additional questions, uh, again, feel free to ask. And please watch my first video on Sigmund Freud if you haven't already. And in the near future, I'll be uploading relatively soon uh, more videos on psychology uh, as I record them. Thank you all for watching, and uh, have a good day.